What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel. My name is Dustin. This is my first episode. It's been a long time coming, and today I want to talk about why I started keto. I know my weight really started to climb in about the fifth grade. Over the years, I had my normal ups and downs. But I'm not really sure what my highest weight actually ever became. Uh, I know in 2010, I really gave it a good go, and I was going to the gym every day for about six months or so. I was going about five days a week. I was going uh, every day before work and two days a week after work as well, so really hitting it hard. In about six months, I lost about 30 pounds, feeling kind of let down and discouraged that I should have lost more in that amount of time. I really, you know, because I really didn't know, um, didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing, how much I was supposed to be losing, that sort of thing, so... Just got really discouraged and uh, I gave up. Probably not that abnormal and I'm sure some of you out there have uh, dealt with that exact same thing. What really rocked me to my core was in the early part of 2016 being at the doctor's office and stepping on the scale and being over 400 pounds, about 421 pounds. So that really worried me. I mean, worried that I was going to succumb to the same kind of things, you know, the same health problems that my mom had faced, you know, for most of my childhood and added adolescent life. Shander and I had a long discussion about weight loss surgery and she's a nurse and sometimes you know saw complications with those surgeries and we decided that we would go ahead and give low carb a shot um, even though not really even knowing what low carb was at the time. You know, we thought starting at about 150-200 grams of carbs a day would be you know a good place to start you know for breakfast I was having oatmeal with honey and granola and you know it really tasted good but not really exactly what I should have been eating but I want to give a little bit of a backstory about my mom as I mentioned that she had a lot of complications uh, you know me being so worried about being at that weight she never got to be you know that large but she dealt with complications with diabetes, you know, for as long as I can remember, you know, always trying to lose weight. She was always one that would try any, any fad diet that they would come out. She did. I remember as a kid, she was eating, you know, grapefruit diet, the water diet, just drinking water, you know, drinking tons and tons of water every day. She was eating rice cakes and she was doing whatever she could, whatever the new thing was on TV, you know, to lose weight. And it never really seemed to do the trick, and she ended up having a, um, you know, a massive stroke in 2007. We think she may have had a couple minor strokes before that that we just didn't notice. Um, so after the massive stroke, she was in nursing homes, you know, on and off for, you know, a good portion of her life, and um, you know, even when she was home, if she would fall trying to get her up and, you know, just all that, you know, it's just really difficult to deal with, you know, um, I mean, you just feel helpless, you know, you want nothing more than to help your mom, but you don't even know what to do, you know, um, you know, she ended up passing away in 2013, um, another massive stroke, um, it was pretty rough on me, and I just knew that I needed to do something, but, you know, again, I just didn't know what that something was, and it really took me hitting rock bottom, you know, hitting that 421 pounds before I was even able to, you know, begin to know what to do. So, like I said, <clears throat> we tried, you know, we decided to start low carb, 150 to 200 grams of carbs. I was going in to see my general practitioner, um, to have hernia surgery. I've been dealing with a hernia for quite some time. Um, this is in 2016, so three years after my mom had passed away, uh, finally getting this hernia taken care of that I probably had since about 2010 or so. It just kind of gives you an idea of how often I didn't go to the doctor. You know, probably had diabetes, potential heart issues, hernia to get taken care of, the General practitioners, you know, general concern for me to have surgery to even get the hernia repaired uh, with my weight situation. So, in passing, the general practitioner mentioned uh, that to lose weight, I would need to be in ketosis, uh, but he didn't really elaborate on that. Me being the person who will dive into a subject, 
I, you know, went headlong into it. I went ahead and I found a podcast. I found the two keto dudes. They were instrumental in me starting, you know, the ketogenic lifestyle. I listened to every episode, started from episode number one, all the way until I caught up. Finally decided, you know, after some convincing, Shannon and I would start Keto with the Family on September the 12th, 2016. You know, over the course of that time, listening to podcasts, you know, looking at YouTube videos, um, websites, anything that we could find, um, you know, four years ago, there wasn't nearly as much information on YouTube as there is now. Um, But, uh, you know, we were able to find success. Uh, I've lost well over 100 pounds. She's lost about 40 pounds or so. You know, we're still going strong. I went from uh, just started buying 5X t-shirts into now I'm wearing a 2X shirt. Uh, I was wearing 50 inch pants that were getting a little tight and now I'm in a 38 inch pant. So making, you know, great progress and it's, you know, really the weight itself has never been the major issue for me. My issue, you know, and what I want to make sure I get out of the ketogenic lifestyle is overall health. I want to be around, you know, I have a grandchild now, you know, she was born in 2018, in August. Also, being that large came with, you know, a great deal of anxiety, um, you know, flying, for example. You know, as soon as I would book that airline ticket, that whole anxiety of, will I need a seatbelt extender? Will I be able to buckle the seatbelt? Will I, you know, will I get, you know, asked to leave the plane? Will I be asked to buy a second seat, you know? I'd seen this kind of thing happen with Kevin Smith and and that's always, you know, was always in the back of my head, something that I was always worried about. So, you know, after being keto and flying for the first time, um, getting onto an airplane and being able to buckle that butt, you know, belt, you know, buckle that seatbelt and have slack in it and be able to tighten it like you're supposed to and not stress about it. I think that is something that is so important. I think that is something that makes this lifestyle something that I want to share with everybody. I want to be able to be a resource, um, you know, someone who's lived the lifestyle for over three years, you know. You know, I've made mistakes, I've found cool stuff. I want to hopefully with this channel, you know, help help those, you know, to not have to go through and, you know, maybe not even get to where I was. So, so I hope that, you know, you, you enjoy this video and it will, and you found it helpful, and inspirational. Um, if so, you know, please hit the like button, subscribe, the bell notification and, uh, share it with your friends. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye everybody.